you need the sun to take great bird images. At least that's what most people think and they miss out on amazing photos in cloudy conditions. So for today's video I want to show you why I love shooting with clouds but also look at shooting in the sun, go through the settings that I use in each condition so you can take amazing bird images in all conditions. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you can't take great bird images in the sun. In fact, it's probably easier to get really nice looking images with nice colors because you can use low ISO, higher shutter speed and a higher aperture. But at the same time, the sun can also be quite limiting because the light is very directional. So for great bird images, you either want the sun right behind you so it's illuminating the bird or you might want to go for like silhouette shots, then you need to kind of shoot into the sun. But if the sun is just coming randomly from either side, it usually doesn't really work for birds well and you get really unpleasant looking shadows on the bird. Naturally, sunlight also adds more contrast and more saturation to the images from the get-go. So the whole editing process is actually easy as well and with just a few clicks you can usually get quite a nice and decent looking image. Another drawback for me with shooting in the sun, besides it being so directional and you have to be careful of where you go and where you stand, it's also shadows, especially if you have trees around you. If you're under tree cover and the sun is out, it's usually impossible to take nice bird images because it's just really dappled light. There's a shadow here, there's a bright spot there, just makes it basically impossible to take nice shots in the forest when the sun is just out and burning down. When the sun is out, you only have a couple of hours in the morning, a couple of hours in the evening to take really nice bird images. If you go out at 10, 11 in the morning, the light is so harsh that it just doesn't look nice anymore. It's too contrasty, the saturation kind of fades away and you get really unpleasant looking shadows on the birds and that's really not what we want. So while sunlight, low sunlight, right behind you, shining on a nice bird can look amazing, there's also limitations when it comes to it. So why do I love shooting in cloudy conditions and why does it seem like so many people struggle with clouds? The advantages to me are very obvious. First of all, I can shoot all day. With the sun we have a couple of hours in the morning and in the afternoon where you get nice soft light for your images, whereas on a cloudy day like today I can shoot 8-10 hours a day and get beautiful light all day. The light is also non-directional, which means I can shoot a bird that way, that way, this way, that way, anyway, basically. So if I see a really cool bird in a great spot, the light doesn't stop me from taking a great image. Whereas with the sun, I can only shoot in one direction, usually with the sun right behind me. So if a bird lands between me and the sun, I either have to walk around the bird to get a shot, or have to shoot into the sun getting an image that most likely won't look quite right. So with the clouds, I don't have that problem and I can walk around, walk through forest and shoot in all directions, giving me a lot more opportunities to get a great photo. And I just mentioned the forest. Forest is another great example where clouds are your best friend. With the sun out, we get bright areas, dark shadows in the forest. But with clouds, that all disappears and we get nice, smooth looking images without having to deal with those strong shadows and highlights. So why do I like photographing in cloudy conditions so much? For flexibility and for creative control. Creative control because the files I'm getting when I'm shooting in cloudy conditions are nice and bright, flat and dull. You might say, well that doesn't sound very nice. And in fact, these files are harder to edit. But if you know what you're doing, you can actually transform these images into amazing looking final files and create your own style through the editing process. If you have any questions about how to edit your images, I would highly recommend that you check out my masterclass on editing your bird images so you know as well how to get the absolute most out of all your images. You can also use a little bit of fill flash in the field to add a little bit of extra spark and light to these images, really creating a unique look that's very different to the images that most other people take. So what are the challenges when it comes to shooting in cloudy conditions and why do so many people struggle with clouds? First of all, I think it's a mix of a few different things. We have to use higher ISO, 
lower shutter speeds and shoot a little bit more wide open compared to sunny days. So that in itself adds the challenge because low shutter speeds, high ISO adds more noise to our images and the chance of getting motion blur or blur in our images also increases. If you nail the editing process and you know what you're doing in the field, shooting with clouds actually opens up a whole new world for you because you can shoot longer, you can shoot in all directions and just get overall more images and personally I think nicer images as well. So now that you know why I love clouds, would I always want to shoot in clouds or are there situations where the sun is simply superior? Definitely they are. Mainly if it involves the sky or water, you want sun. If you're shooting shorebirds, ducks, anything that's on or near the water, clear skies and nice blue water is definitely the way to go. If you're having a cloudy day like today and the grey sky is reflecting in the water, the colour just becomes murky grey and you just won't be able to get like a nice duck photo for instance. And also for flight shots I find it much easier to have nice sunlight because we can simply use much higher shutter speeds and usually it looks nicer to have blue sky with just a few clouds than grey sky or white sky when you're shooting against the sky when it comes to doing flight shots. So there's definitely situations where the sun is superior as I said with the sky or water but then there's also birds where shooting in cloudy condition is definitely much better. And those are the birds that have very high contrast between the feathers like a black and white bird or a yellow and black bird where it's very difficult with the sunny conditions to get detail in the bright areas and the dark areas. Having nice soft light for those birds definitely increases your chance of nice keepers and makes it easier during the editing process to have details in the bright areas and in the dark areas. So now that we looked at the advantages and disadvantages of sunny days and cloudy days, I want to look at the settings that I would typically use on those days. And while most cameras usually get the settings on a sunny day fairly right, cloudy days are definitely a challenge and I want to let you know what settings I'm using. So next time the clouds come in, you don't have to go home, but you get your camera out and get amazing photos. So let's look at the settings that I would typically use on a sunny day before the light gets too harsh to get nice images. I'm shooting manual. If you have any questions about manual, check out my video on how to master the manual mode and hopefully it will answer all your questions and make you a manual and much better shooter as well. So the settings I'm going to give you is the range of the ISO I would be using, the range of the shutter speeds and the range of the aperture. So typically on a sunny day my ISO would be anywhere between 200 and 800 depending on the intensity of the light. I'd probably start out at 800 just when the sun comes up and then go down lower and lower lower all the way down to 200 just before the light gets too bright. And for birds I always want at least like a 400th of a second as my shutter speed. So I would always choose the ISO in a way that I get at least that amount of shutter speed. So with an ISO range of 200 to 800, my shutter speeds typically would be between like a 400th and a 2,000th of a second. And I think that's a pretty good range for most birds. Unless you're doing flight shots, then you want slightly higher shutter speeds to so make sure that you freeze all the action. And when it comes to my aperture, as you know, I really like to shoot stop down. If any questions about that, check out my video on why you shouldn't shoot wide open. So on a sunny day, my aperture would be between f8 and f11 allowing me enough shutter speed but also giving me a nice amount of depth of field. All in all shooting in sunny conditions is not that difficult and even the camera's automatic mode usually get a decent result. The main things to look out for especially when the light gets harsher is that we're not blowing out the bright areas on the bird. When the sunlight gets more intense any sort of white strip on the wing or bright spots on the chest or like on the neck are very prone to blowing out so if you're shooting manual you have to compensate for that with faster shutter speeds or if you're using like AV for instance you have to compensate for that with your exposure compensation. 
And when it comes to understanding what our exposure is like and whether we are clipping anything or losing detail, what tool do we use? Our histogram, right. If you have any questions about exposure or histogram, check out my video on mastering exposure. So in the field, we're constantly checking the histogram, making sure that we're not clipping anything on the right hand side, and then we're good to go. So let's get to the exciting bit. How can you take amazing bird images on dark, dull days? Impossible, you say? No, it's not. That's what I do all the time. And that's my favorite shooting conditions. Of course, I like a light cloud as well, but often I go out and it's fairly dark and fairly dull and I'm still getting really, really nice images. What's the most important thing? Checking your histogram and making sure that you're exposing as far to the right as possible. If you're underexposing your images too much and you end up with dark, dull, noisy images, even the best editing won't be able to save those files. So on cloudy days, it's very important that your exposure is spot on and your files are really nice and bright. Only then you will be able to bring back the life and the colors during the editing process. What are my typical settings on a cloudy day? I've said it in previous videos before, on a day like today, I'd probably go F8, ISO 1600, 400th of a second as my starting point. But my range usually would be between ISO 800, ISO 3200, shutter speed between like a 250th and a 500th of a second, and aperture between 5.6 and 8. I don't like to open up my aperture too much and shoot wide open because then I lose a lot of depth of field on the bird and oftentimes the tail or even the legs are not in focus and that's not the nicest look. So I'm trying to always find a compromise. Because it's dull and dark, I need to have enough shutter speed still to get a sharp bird and don't introduce too much motion blur because birds move around all the time. So there's always a chance of getting a blurry head, blurry wing, blurry tail. So for me, I thought at least a 400th of a second is usually where I like to be at to get reasonably sharp photos. And how do I control that in manual mode? Simply by changing my ISO. So if I need more shutter speed, I just have to go higher. Sometimes I shoot at ISO 6400, but then it really depends on your camera whether I can still handle it or not. But on my 5D Mark IV, I can still get away with it and still get nice images. And overall, I must say, I think noise is a little bit overrated. I wouldn't forego a sharp image just to be shooting at lower ISO. I rather shoot at higher ISO, have a little bit of noise and a sharp image, than shooting at a lower ISO and getting a blurry image. Because a blurry image I can't fix, but a little bit of noise I can easily remove on the computer. If you want to add a little bit of fill flash to a bit of extra spark to your images on a cloudy day, I would usually choose a setting of 164 power on manual mode, manual mode because then the flash outputs the same power every single time. And then either add a bit more flash if the image doesn't look flashed enough or take down the power a little bit if the image looks too flashed. And if you want to learn all about mastering fill flash, check out my video I've done on that topic that shows you how you can use flash to add a little bit more nice light and spark to your images. So let's summarize. On a sunny day, my ISO range is usually between 200 and 800, my aperture between 8 and 11, and my shutter speed between like a 500 to like a 2000 of a second. On a cloudy day, I really need to make sure that I expose as far to the right as possible. And then I will have an ISO range usually between 800 and 3200, a shutter speed between a 250th and a 500th of a second, and an aperture between 5.6 and f8. With these settings in mind, it usually allows me to get nice and flat looking raw files that then allow me to edit them in a nice way and introduce my own style to these images during the editing process. Sun or clouds? Which one is it for you? Personally, if I had to make the choice, I would always choose a cloudy day for that 
added flexibility and that added creative control that it gives me. Simply being able to shoot in all directions and shoot all day is something that I find invaluable, especially when you're traveling. Are you a sun lover that usually hangs up the camera when the clouds roll in? If so, maybe I could convince you to stay out there a little bit longer and with the right techniques get some amazing images. I hope this video helped you to see a new perspective and actually get out there when it's cloudy and not be afraid of clouds. So give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel down there and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye!